this talk is going to be about uh, anonymity of the peer to peer network that underlies all cryptocurrency systems as you mentioned my name is piyush kumar sharma and this work was done in collaboration with devashish and claudia at ku11 max planck and nim also this work was uh, uh, presented at ndss which is an academic conference and this is kind of a uh, a version which is tailored for this place <clears throat> so without further ado i'll just quickly go into the background required to uh, study the problem <clears throat> so when we talk about cryptocurrency systems we can think of them very broadly in working functioning in two layers one is the application layer which basically deals with generating transactions you know <clears throat> mining blocks validating and all those all those stuff but then there is an underlying network layer on which all this information is spread to the network to the peers right so this is basically a peer to peer network where every node is connected and whatever transaction whatever block you generate that is broadcast in the network now when we talk about anonymity we want it at both the layers we have so many application layer techniques but we also want the anonymity at the network layer because if you only have the anonymity at the application layer but not in the network layer then it it in itself is not you know complete anonymity and when i talk about network level anonymity it basically means that we want to map the network identity of the user to the transactions that are seen in the network so the network identity can be ip addresses <clears throat> with this background we can briefly look at one of the not one of the most popular cryptocurrency systems bitcoin and in its peer to peer network by default if there is a transaction the default mechanism is to flood that transaction to all the neighbors this was like pre 2015 and then they do it to their neighbors and so on subsequently they updated their method and then you know uh, they instead of immediately transferring the transaction to all the nodes they transfer it to one node at a time but with some delay but both these approaches have been shown to be subject to de-anonymization attacks one was uh, earlier and the other was later and hence as a result of that there are newer approaches that have been proposed recently in the literature to enhance the anonymity of uh, network level in cryptocurrency systems particularly uh, they can be divided into hop by hop routing or source routing schemes uh, just to give you the difference hop by hop routing schemes are those in which the decision to route the transaction or the packet is taken at that hop itself it will randomly decide among which neighbors it wants to transfers to transfer to and in source routing the complete path of the transaction is fixed so the sender decides which intermediary hops will be followed till the destination and in both these routing in both these categories of schemes there are systems one is dandelion dandelion cluster which is part of uh, hop by hop routing this is a system which is also used by monero to provide network level anonymity and that is why this talk is interesting to the community but the, but then i'll also be talking about source routing schemes which are a very different kind of a routing but still we'll analyze the anonymity good so till this point we know that there are these schemes there there is different kind of routing schemes which have all you know there are different routing properties and anonymity properties but the fundamental problem was we do not know how to make sense of what anonymity they provide because they are different and we do not know how to compare them on common ground so one of the main component of the research was to bring all of them to common grounds and see how we can analyze the anonymity of any given peer to peer system and in this case the adversary model is that there are some nodes which are part of the network who are malicious and the transactions that they are receiving they want to somehow know who are the originator of these transactions at the network level <clears throat> cool so this is what we want to achieve how do we want to achieve it at a high level we want to build a framework and what will be given as input to this framework is the network structure how is the connectivity in the network what is the routing scheme to send messages or transactions in the network and what are the observations you are getting from the network transactions blocks and so on once we give all these inputs to the framework it wants to output what is the anonymity set or how many users or how many senders uh, uh, can i you know de-anonymize in the network or if i cannot de-anonymize how much doubt i have for every particular transaction and how can we achieve this is with the help of something known as bayesian probabilities uh, i'll now then move on to how we basically build this framework with this idea in mind 
So for defining this framework, I need to define some events. These are very simple events. One event is BI, which is basically some benign node or some normal node in DAI generates a transaction. Then there is another event that is the red node, which is the adversary node. It receives a transaction, right? Given these two events, what are we interested to know from an anonymity perspective? It is that this probability, which is conditional probability, PBI given A. Now what that means is, given that some adversary node has received a transaction, in this case the red node, what is the probability that some node I generated it in the network, right? And if you can have this for all the possible originators in the network, we can start to make sense of who is the more probable sender, who is the less probable sender, and we can then use this information to basically calculate anonymity sets. But how do we compute this probability, PBI given A? So for that, in Bayes' theorem, there is this formula. This probability can be calculated by calculating these terms. What these terms essentially mean in this context, PBI is the probability that some benign node I generates a transaction. PA is the probability that an adversary node receives any transaction. And PA given BI is the probability given that some, uh, some benign node I generated a transaction, what is the probability that transaction will reach an adversary node? So this is slightly different than the earlier one. And if we can have the values of all of this, we can calculate PBI given A for all I's and then we can make sense of it. So how do we do that? Let's assume there are N nodes, there are C corrupted nodes in the network. And then this PBI, which is the probability of a node generating a transaction, we assume it to be equal. That is, every node in the network is equally likely to generate a transaction. Now, from an adversarial perspective, this is a very bad case because we do not know if someone is more probable to generate a transaction or less. But still, we'll see that with the analysis, even with this assumption, the anonymity is not very good. So this is how we can calculate the probability of a node generating a transaction. The probability that any transaction will reach an adversary can be calculated by multiplying the probability of a node generating a transaction with the probability that the transaction reaches the adversary. And if you do this for all the nodes in the network, this is how it can be achieved. And without going into further details, if we you know, substitute these in the formulas, what we'll get is eventually what is there on your <coughs> uh, extreme right corner, in which case the only thing that we need to calculate is PA given BI. This is some probability. And we'll look at how we can do this. And once we have this, we'll have a probability distribution of who are the possible senders for any given transaction. So far, so good. But what do we do with this information? These probability distributions do not tell us anything about who is the probable uh, originator or how many possible originators are there for these transactions. So for this, for calculating the anonymity, we use something which is known as entropy, which is given by this formula. But essentially what it means is, uh, it is measured in bits. If you have an entropy of two bits, it means you have doubt among two to the power two possible senders which means if the entropy is zero bits, that means you can clearly de anonymize or you can know who the uh, potential center is, right? Because it will be two to the power zero. Okay, so we can have probability distributions. We can then calculate the anonymity or anonymity sets in this case. Now, how we, do we use this framework to model the existing schemes that are there, both hop by hop routing and the uh, source routing? So we'll start off with the hop by hop routing scheme. We'll start with the underline. How does it work? It essentially works by having two sets of graph. What is the first graph? First is the existing Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer graph, uh, which is there in the network. And secondly, it creates its own privacy subgraph, which is a subgraph of the actual Bitcoin graph. Why is it a subgraph? Because it, it covers all the nodes in the network, but it is supposed to be a line graph. We'll look at why this is important and how this provides anonymity, but this is how Dendeline functions with the help of these two graphs. Once they define these graphs, what they have is a, something known as a two-faced operation, stem face and the fluff face. And we'll just look at how this faces work. So let's see, uh, let's suppose this is an example of a network where initially every transaction will be in the stem face. That is, it will be, it will be forwarded on the privacy subgraph. So let's say BI has a transaction which it wants to broadcast in the network. Instead of being instantly broadcast, being broadcasted in the network, it will be forwarded to some 
intermediary nodes in the network to a particular point. And after that, at each node, there will be a decision that will be made. Should we continue forwarding it in a single line or now should we broadcast it to the network? And at some point of time, in this case, uh, when it reaches node BJ, the transaction will be uh, broadcasted to the network, which is on the right side. Now, we already saw in the background or in the related work section that this diffusion process, that is the part from where this node BJ broadcasts the transaction in the network. In that case, you can still identify the source of the originator. So in this case, if you do the analysis, you will still know that the originator is the node B subscript J, right? But the original originator was BI. So in this way, then the line provides anonymity to the transactions. And it only provides it essentially in the stem phase. Thus, it makes sense to only look at the stem phase and how we can put it into our framework. And how do we do that? So we abstracted out this line graph, which was there in the end line, which is the privacy subgraph. And here again, let's see that there is some adversary node. It receives a transaction. And now it starts doing calculations. What calculations it will do? Let's see the node which is just behind it. What is the probability that the transaction of this node will reach the adversary? So it's one. All the transactions that are generated by just the previous hop will reach the next hop because that is a defined parameter in the system. At least you have to uh, transfer your transaction to one hop. So first nodes, all transaction will be received by adversary A. Okay. What about node two? So for this, the transactions can be calculated by one. That is, it will transfer all its transactions to its immediate node. But then from that point onwards, it will decide whether to trans whether to uh, forward it to node A or to diffuse in the network based on the probability known as PF, which is the forwarding probability. So in this case, it will be one into PF that the transaction reaches adversary node A. And similarly, if we look at three, it will be one into PF into PF. And if we have to generalize for any given benign node in the network, how we can do that is we need to multiply PF uh, uh, HI minus one number of times, where HI is basically the number of hops between this benign node I and the adversary. So with this way, we will be able to model Dandelion's you know, uh, system. And obviously there were other, so this is the default way of analyzing it, but there were other ways with which you, you, know, you can reduce the set, which consists of uh, the nodes. So in this case, if you take an example, let's say there are two adversaries. If an adversary A2 receives a transaction, then it can be sure that the originator is only among the node one or N. It cannot be an originator between n plus one to m because they are colluding. If the transaction would have been generated by nodes n plus one to m, then it would have been received by a1 first. And if a1 already received it, it would already have communicated that I have received this transaction. You do not know to, uh, you do not have to do the analysis. So these kind of small uh, uh, changes we incorporated in the analysis, and this is how we modeled Nandelin. And it there was a successor system for this Nandelin plus plus in which everything remained the same. But now, instead of a line graph, they create a four regular graph, which essentially means it will have two outgoing edges and two incoming edges as an improvement. So if you look at this graph, how will the privacy subgraph in this case look like? It will look like something like this, where every node has two outgoing edges, right? And for the purpose of analysis, let's say there is an adversary node A again. And now we want to calculate it received a transaction. What is the probability that it received from, trans, uh, from node one? So for that, we'll have to calculate all the paths that leads from one to A, because that is the only way the transaction could have reached A, right? So in this case, there are two paths, as you can see, one, two, four, A, and one, two, three, four, A. And for all of them, we need to calculate the probability like we did earlier. So in this case, node one will always forward it to its next hop, but it has two next hops. So it will select equally likely. That means there is 50% chance of selecting the next hop. So it will be one by two probability that it will reach node two. After that, it will decide based on the forwarding probability. Should I forward it or should I diffuse it? If it decides to forward, then we have probability PF and that will again be divided by two because it did not forward to three, but to four. And similarly for from four to eight will be PF by two. And we can do this calculation for all the paths and we can generalize this scheme with the help of this formula where we can calculate in the case of Dendelin plus plus by multiplying half into PF by two, HI minus one number of times, so HI 
minus HI is again the number of hops, but in this case we need to do this for all the paths that are possible. And once we do this, here again we look at can this somehow be better by multiple adversaries colluding. If you look at this example, you can see that if A3 receives a transaction, then it can be sure that the possible originators are only among 5 to 10. It cannot be among 1 to 4 because if 1 to 4 would have generated the transaction, it would have been captured by A1 and A2 first. Right? And even more so, if you'll closely look at node 10, if A3 receives a transaction from node 10, then it can be 100% sure that 10 is the originator. Right? Because 10's one outgoing hop is to adversary node and other outgoing hop is also to adversary node. And if they know this graph, then they can very easily see that there's only one possible way. I did not generate it. If we are receiving it, then it is the originator. So <clears throat> this is how we perform the analysis of uh, uh, Dandelion and Dandelion++. Plus Plus. But this is all the analysis part. What were the results? So for that, we constructed peer-to-peer -peer graphs, line graphs, and you know, four regular graphs, because for Bitcoin, we did not have an implementation. And then we assume random adversary nodes in the network, some fraction of it, and then we vary various parameters, such as what is the effect of forwarding probability, what is the effect of the total number of corrupted nodes in the network, total nodes in the network, and so on. And this is one of the results that we observed. So what is on the, so in this case, we keep two parameters constant. That is the forwarding probability. We keep it as 0.9. That means at every hop, there is a 90% chance that it will continue in the stem phase and 10% chance that it will diffuse in the network. And we also uh, assume that there is 1% of the adversary nodes in the network of the total nodes. In this case, what do you observe that even when he kept increasing the network size, right? Uh, on the x-axis, on the y-axis, you can see that the entropy is not increasing. And what that essentially means is, even if you'll keep increasing the size of the network, you'll not be able to increase your anonymity, which would have been the case, right? If you're having more users joining the network, then you should have more doubt on more users. But this is not what we observed from our analysis. <clears throat> and then, when we varied the number of uh, corrupted nodes in the network, from 5% to 50%, this is what we observe, that uh, for Dandelion, uh, let's say if there is 25% collusion, that is one fourth of the network wants to somehow do some you know, uh, de-anonymization, you can see that for 10% of the transactions, they can completely identify who the originator is, but the median line, which is the red line, which somewhat comes close to two, for 50% of the transactions, they only have doubt among four possible originators. So out of 1,000, for 50% of the transactions, you only have doubt among four. Then similarly, we have for Dendron plus plus. In that case, obviously, the overall anonymity increased. But if you have a sufficient number of adversaries in the network, even in this case for 25%, the 10% of transactions can be completely de-anonymized. So this is what I had for hop by hop routing, which is a routing scheme. And then we could look at a system for source routing. In this case, we have Lightning Network. So what is Lightning Network? It is basically a payment channel network, which was built to provide scalability as well as privacy to the Bitcoin transactions. It uses onion routing. That is the source decides who the actual, uh, what the actual path will be. And no node in the intermediary nodes more than its previous hop and the next hop in the network. And obviously, since transactions are forwarded through these different payment channels, they charge a fees. And because they charge a fees, the client selects the best path based on fees and also other parameters to decide when it is sending to a particular destination. And this information of the whole payment channel and what fees they charge, this is public and known to everyone. So in this case, just to give you some context, if you assume this is the Lightning Network graph, uh, which is currently there. And let's say all of them have equal fees and node one wants to transfer something to node seven, the path that will be selected will be, uh, will be the one highlighted in yellow. And similarly, if you want to transfer to node 13 or 14, this will be the path. In this case, let's assume there is some adversary node A. Since this information is public, it knows uh, all the information. It knows that if some transaction is coming to it, uh, uh, if, if some transaction is routed by adversary A, it can know that uh, there is a good chance that node 1 is the forwarder because a lot of uh, paths, 
best paths goes via this adversary for this particular node. So we try to leverage this in our analysis. And how we did that? We had two steps. In the first step, we calculated the all to all, that is all source to all destination, best paths that are there in the network, assuming that they perform the uh, lowest amount of transaction, let's say one Satoshi or one milli Satoshi. And once we have this all to all source pair paths, we do some analysis. And what is that analysis? Essentially, we needed to uh, compute this probability P A given B I. In this case, it can be calculated by something like this, SPI and SPI, which SPI is the shortest number of paths, paths which are for node I and they go via adversary A. So in this case, if I'll do a quick calculation, one has four paths, one to two, one to A, one to four and one to three, right? Out of that, three of those paths will go via adversary A. That is one to A, one to three and one to four. So in this case, the probability PA given BI will be three by four for this particular node one. And like this we do for, this is small example, like this we do for all other nodes and all other adversary nodes in the network. And not only this, we do other uh, important reductions in the anonymity set. How we do that? Here I have taken an example. Because the source and the destination and the complete path is fixed, so there is more information to leak here. How? We'll just see. In this case, let's say adversary A receives a transaction from node number four and it had to be transferred to node number eight because the channel is fixed, because the path is fixed. In this case, the only possible originators can be two and four. Ideally, you would think that, okay, node one, three, and maybe five also transaction could have gone via, but it is not the case because the best path, assume equal weights in this case, is only via uh, uh, two and four. It's only for two and four via eight. For node one, if they have to go to the node eight, they will directly go via three, five, and eight, right? So this is how we uh, incorporate these small additions and then eventually performed an evaluation. So here again, we actually developed a simulator. We obtained the public topology snapshot of Lightning Network that is there. And then we assigned adversity nodes based on, different, based on different strategies, calculated probability distributions, the entropy, the same thing. We had various ways of selecting the adversary in this case. Um, I'll only talk about two of the ways, the strategic selection, because it is a payment channel network, some nodes have a lot of payment channels and we wanted to see how much damage or how much de-anonymization can they do if they are the adversaries. So if you look at that, we selected the top degree nodes as the adversary in the Lightning Network for a topology which was there in 2018. And these are the results that we observed. So in this case, you can see on x-axis that for 1% of the, if 1% of the top degree nodes are the adversary, then 25% of the transactions can be completely de-anonymized for them. And 50% of the transactions, the entropy is two, that means you have doubt only among four or less number of nodes. And you can see if there is 10%, this ratio decreases drastically. And if we now move ahead and look at what happened like in a while from 2018 till 2021, so these are the results that we saw. In each case, we only selected 1% nodes at the adversary, and the 2021 snapshot that for the one which we last checked uh, latest, you can see that 50, for the 50% of the transaction, these 1% nodes uh, can completely de-anonymize them. And even for 75% of the transactions, the anonymity is just four, the doubt is only among four people or less. And just to tell you, the size of this network is around 9,000 nodes. So among 9,000 nodes, for 50%, you are completely sure. And for 75, like 50 to 75% uh, um, quartile, you're only having doubt among four people. And so this was all about the analysis. Now to summarize or what you can take away from this talk. So <clears throat> essentially there was no way for us to measure somehow and compare the different routing anonymity schemes that are network level routing anonymity schemes that are there in the, lit in the literature. So for that, we developed a framework using Bayesian uh, uh, probabilities. We applied that framework to two existing uh, routing schemes, hop by hop and source routing. For that, we have Dendeline and Lightning. And we performed an analysis and observed that uh, most of these schemes do not provide very high anonymity to the transactions uh, or to the users. And if you want to uh, play around uh, uh, with, with this uh, analysis or with this, so all the code and all the related data is public on this website. So yeah, thank you so much.